And my favorite uncle is my uncle Gloria. He's cool as shit. I got uh, <laughs> yeah, Uncle Gloria. I think she was wrong. So I was about nine. I was like, hold on, wait a minute, Uncle Gloria. My uncle Gloria is the most flamboyantly gay dude I've ever seen in my life. But he's also one of the most fearless, the, just the strongest-hearted people I've ever met. Always been a hero to me. One time, there's this big steroid dude standing in front of him talking shit to my uncle, and my uncle was standing there like this. And when the dude finished talking shit, my uncle said, okay, you want me to tell you where your problem is? I'm gonna tell you where your problem is. I do this pretty good, huh? <laughs> Fuck all of you. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you where your problem is. Your problem is that I'm more man than you'll ever be and more woman than you'll ever have. I said, oh, that shit is gangster. But my favorite uncle is my Uncle Nito. I call him my drunk Uncle Nito because he's my drunk uncle. <laughs> he's never, ever sober. I don't care what time he's in. It would be Monday afternoon, 11 o'clock, or Saturday at 4 in the afternoon. He's sitting there like this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he got a cigarette that hangs out his mouth that never ashes. I don't know how the fuck he does it. <laughs> but the cigarette never ashes, man. <laughs> it's just sister like this. And he, he <laughs> you know somebody like that? Yeah. And then, like, he was so drunk, he would fall asleep in the middle of sentences. Like, you said, Theo, let me get a dollar. You know, I ain't got no mm, fucking dollar. <laughs> he, he, he smoked cigarettes for like 40 years, so his voice, he sounds like Wolfman Jack, but his voice comes in and out as he's talking to you, so he goes, Ale, I get in the cocina. What? He says cool shit, like my daughter was taking the first steps. I said, Theo, look, your granny, she's walking. He said, she walking? Yeah. Tell her go get me a beer. <laughs> <laughs> he was the one that taught me all the important shit that I had to learn in life. He was the one. He would call me over. He'd call him life lessons. He'd be, Ale, come here. I got a life lesson for you. <laughs> he did that a lot. Uh, <laughs> he called me over when I was eight years old. He said, if you want your wife to come home and fuck the shit out of you, do the dishes. <laughs> he told me this shit when I was eight. <laughs> when I was 11 years old, he called me over and he said, Ale, come here, I got a life lesson for you. Si tú tienes una mujer y tú no le comes el culo, se lo come alguien más. For those of you who don't speak Spanish, when I was 11 years old, my uncle called me over and told me that if you have a woman and you don't eat her ass, somebody else will. <laughs> he told me this shit when I was 11. I thought he was crazy as shit. Now I think he's a fucking genius. <laughs> I remember when his wife stabbed him, right? We're all at the house, everybody was kicking it. What? Oh, uh, don't trip. <laughs> People get stabbed in Puerto Rican houses all the time. This shit just happens. I remember when his wife stabbed him. The first thing he did when he got out of the hospital is he went over, he, he picked her up at the jailhouse, took her home, and asked her to cook him dinner. And I was sitting there like, Theo, you fucking nuts. She tried to kill you. Now you're going to eat her food? He said, Ale, let me tell you something. <laughs> A woman, she don't stab you because she don't like you. She stab you because she love you too much. <laughs> 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 